Hi everyone, welcome back to Lucala. So, I did a video last week, but I've returned this week, and I'm kind of going to do an extension of something I touched on a few videos ago. So, I spoke about some Nintendo Switch games I would like to see this year, in 2021. One of which was the return of the Mario Kart series with Mario Kart 9. Seeing as the Switch has not had its own version of Mario Kart, only having Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which obviously first came out on the Wii U back in 2014. So that's the last time we had a fully new Mario Kart game. So I think it's about time we have a new one and that's what I'm going to talk about today. My expectations and what I would like to see from Mario Kart 9. Before we get into the video though, I thank everyone for the support so far on the channel. I'm trying to have a little bit of a rebrand in the way I approach things, not really focused on news. Just talking about gaming stuff and stuff that I'm interested in and stuff like that. Like this video. So if you did enjoy or if you are enjoying, please subscribe. It does help massively support me to grow and allow me to keep doing more stuff. And leave a like as well as that helps the algorithm to allow more people to see what I'm doing as well. And engage in the comments. Let me know if you agree with what I'm saying about Mario Kart what tracks you'd like, what characters you'd like, stuff like that. So let's get into the video then. So as I said, the last Mario Kart game in its new format came out in 2014. Obviously this was brought to the Switch in 2017 um, under the title of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And you know, that's a very strong Mario Kart game, but I think the Switch being so successful, it definitely deserves its own like fully fledged, unique, uh, exclusive, if you like, um, Mario Kart title. So Mario Kart 9, I'm just going to put it as a placeholder name, you'd assume that's the way they're going to go with the last two uh, Mario Kart 7 and 8 come in under that sort of format. Obviously we had Wii and DS and so on beforehand and a couple of other names then like Double Dash. And it's not always been a number based format but I would assume Nintendo would continue that based on the last couple of games anyway. So we're going to first of all talk about some of the characters. In this video I'll talk about characters, I'll talk about tracks and then maybe just a little bit in general about what they can do um, for the game to make it unique. So characters then. So what I would like to see from this installment of Mario Kart is maybe going down a little bit like the Smash Brothers route, what they did with Smash Brothers Ultimate for the Switch. So they obviously went with the, the sort of um, slogan of everyone is here. I kind of would like to see that a little bit with this one, so there's not really as many cases in Mario Kart history, but I'd like to see every character that has been playable in a mainline Mario Kart game, not including the arcade or the mobile spin-off, uh, but a mainline Mario Kart game. I'd like to see all the characters return here, so I'll go through the ones that weren't present in Mario Kart 8 or Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so I'm just going to assume all the characters in those two games for this video will return. That's just the way I'm going to approach it. So returning from past games then, other than Mario Kart 8, we've got from Super Mario Kart, the one on the Super Nintendo, the first game, Donkey Kong Jr. Now, a bit of a weird one that, because obviously Donkey Kong has been in all of them, I believe, since. Um, but in the first one, he was called Donkey Kong Jr. And this is because in the original Mario games, I believe Donkey Kong Jr. was the character thrown in the barrels. I think. I could be wrong on that. Um, but yeah, it would just be a nice little thing to sort of bring him back. And you've got all the baby characters, haven't you? Like Baby Mario, Baby Luigi. So Donkey Kong Jr. could be the equivalent for Donkey Kong. There wasn't any on Mario Kart Super Circuit or Mario Kart 64, I believe, that weren't present in the last game. So I didn't need to talk about those. But when we get to Double Dash, there is a couple. So first of all, we've got Birdo. Obviously, was the partner for Yoshi in the Double Dash format. Uh, Diddy Kong, Paratrooper and P.T. Piranha. I think Birdo, Diddy Kong and Paratrooper, like there's no reason why I feel these should have been cut for Mario Kart games after this and Mario Kart 8 especially. Diddy Kong gives the Donkey Kong franchise an extra character and he's present in a lot of other games like Smash and been around the, on the scene of Nintendo and is a popular character so I'm surprised he's maybe not in it. Birdo again is another female character, essentially a female version of Yoshi. Easy, I think, you know, it's a Mario franchise character, I think, should be included. Uh, Paratrooper, again, is a regular enemy, so if you've got Koopa Trooper, Paratrooper is just another option. Even if you just offer it as, like, a recolor, just to have it included would be nice. A PT Piranha, I think, from Mario Kart Sunshine at the time. Um, just be nice, especially now you've had the All-Stars, Mario All-Stars pack released on the Switch with Sunshine included. First time you've been able to play Sunshine since the GameCube. It'd be nice to see the return of this character in a everyone is you sort of a format. 
go to Mario Kart DS, then you've got Rob. Now, a bit of a random inclusion this was, but obviously we saw Rob included in Super Smash Brothers as well, um, Brawl. So just bring it back in here, like, why not? Not really got much more to say on that one. On the Wii then, we've got Funky Kong, so another Donkey Kong character. This was a very popular character on the Wii, but I think maybe the way that the game worked with heavy characters and the bikes and stuff, Funky would seem to be quite a good one. You have to unlock him, so I think people like to use him. But again, just bring it back. I think people would enjoy that. I don't understand why you need to cut him out. I mean, he was a bit of a random one probably to be brought in. Don't know the exact reasons. Maybe he was linked to the Donkey Kong Country uh, sort of relaunch back when that came out on the Wii originally. I'm not sure, but just bring him back. Uh, Mario Kart 7, then you've got... It's probably the most random ones. We've got Honey Queen and Wiggler. But again, Wiggler is obviously... A regular Mario Kart character, or Mario franchise character, sorry. Honey Queen, a little bit more unique, um, probably comes from 3D land on the 3DS, I believe. Could be wrong again on that one. Obviously got Mario tie-ins though, so easy to sort of, you know, you've just had 3D, I know it's not 3D land, but brought to the Switch. Same sort of like branding sort of um, Mario universe between the games, I guess. So again, just bring them all back and everyone is here. But that's all the ones that have been in past Mario games that I've, I think I've got them all that um, that I've included in that list there. So now I'm going to talk about some new characters that I would like to see. And I think some of them might be pretty obvious. Other ones probably won't happen, but I think are good and um, worth talking about. In terms of the Mario franchise then, I think one that is like um, maybe a shoe in maybe not. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But Pauline from Mario Odyssey. So this is the character that you see in New Donk City that's like singing the song. Sort of like human based. It's probably new for the Mario franchise. But I think that's definitely somebody, especially if it comes on the Switch this game. Mario Odyssey was the Switch's like Mario game. Um, so it would make sense to have characters from that in there. And this is one I definitely think has a good shout. Uh, on the same sort of theme then you've got the Brudels, which if they go down the same route as what they did with Bowser Duke Jr. with all the like reskins of him, all the like baby Koopalings or whatever you call them, like Iggy and all them, then the Brudels definitely could fit into that theme. So just have one and then either have them as different skins or just have them all as like playable. So you've got the five, so you've got Madame Brood, Topper, Harriet, Spuart and Rango. So obviously they're part of the band in Mario Odyssey that like go along. I think they're the bosses and stuff, you have to fight them. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I played that game. Now. Then I would like to see Captain Toad. So obviously Toad is a character, but Captain Toad, you know, just be... He's had his own game as Captain Toad, so just give him another slot in Mario Kart. Again, another option where you could just have it as a reskin of Toad and it limits the like roster. You don't have to have them all as a unique sort of like slot but have it as a skin why not introduce skins and have stuff like this as an option if you're going down that route you could have like plenty of other options like mario dr mario stuff like that but i'm not going to get into that in this video that is something that's worth talking about though something they could include to mario kart i know they have used it in bits but have an option for every character isn't it then i've got um some sort of basic mario franchise characters i think deserve a shout that being included so i've got goomba and i've got hammer brother you could argue maybe like goomba sometimes is in the courses as an obstacle so you wouldn't do it but he's a regular opponent in uh, a regular enemy in the mario game so it'd be cool to see you be able to play as him as a as a racer in this and same as hammer brothers as well i think that would be quite a good option so you've had like piranha you've had like dry bones so why can't you maybe have these ones that's just the way I was thinking about it. Don't expect to see all of them. They're just ideas I'm putting out there. In terms of non-Mario characters then, they started introducing characters from like other games um, other than the Donkey Kong series and in the last game in Mario Kart 8. So as an extension to that, I think obviously we've already had a uh, link. So I'd like to see maybe Zelda come in. Um, you've got Breath of the Wild 2 on the horizon. It's Zelda's 35th anniversary. Depending on when this game is made, it could be a good tie-in. Tom and Nuke then, Animal Crossing are sold tremendously well on the Switch. Um, they introduced some Animal Crossing characters already, of course, so just an extension there, like an extra character that people would sort of be able to relate to is obviously important in the new game. And I think you could link a course in nicely there as well. Um, you've already had uh, F-Zero tracks brought in, an F-Zero car, and also I think the Mii costumes where you could uh, use the Amiibo to get like, the Mii as these certain characters but still as the me but captain falcon if you're not going to give him his own game then give him a full character potentially in in the next mario kart 
then I've got some new sort of representation. So I think I've got Metroid Prime 4 and Horizon. So another good crossover there would be to bring Samus over. Um, Pokemon. Again, it's an anniversary year for the franchise. You've got some, some uh, new stuff probably going to be coming out. And it's always been a popular franchise and ever growing. So Pikachu or something like that, I think, would be a good option here. And definitely options there for some unique courses. And if you want to sort of go a little bit further, and I think this is unlikely, but go third party then, I think one good shout would be Sonic. I know he's had his own racing game. But Nintendo and Sega have worked together well in the past. You've had the Mario and Sonic games, and that's kind of why I've gone for Sonic, because of their, their tie-in from that. But they could make it work, just one one or two characters. If you wanted to get, if there was a deal and you wanted more than just Sonic, you could bring Tails and Knuckles, I guess. But um, potentially, just based on their link from Mario and Sonic, and obviously these extra, this expansion of Mario Kart, I just feel like if Super Smash Bros. has done it, it potentially could. They started doing it with Mario Kart already, so it could, it could grow from that front and it won't be too bad I wouldn't like to see it be too much third party like Smash has had a lot of third party characters getting involved I think Mario Kart would be better if it's kept as mostly Nintendo but characters like Sonic I think you can get away with to be honest okay so I'm going to move on I'm going to move on now to the courses um, and the way I'm going to talk about this is just talk about a couple of new ideas for courses they could use like the theme or um, game style to create a course based on that and then I'm going to look at some of the past courses I'd love to see brought back for the retro cups in this one because that's obviously the format of the way Mario Kart games work. First of all then um, going with the standard setup where you've got four cups new courses four cups retro starting with some of the new ideas I think Mario Odyssey I've touched on that already with the character selection but it'll be like I'd be shocked if there isn't a course that's linked to Mario Odyssey, so I've got a couple of ideas here. I think the obvious one is New Donk City, having a course based around this, I think would be very likely. And the music selection, I would go along with that as well, I think, you know, again, that's another obvious choice. Um, however, there's two other options I think are worth looking at, different reasons for each one. I think Cap Kingdom is a unique sort of aesthetic, um, if you want to involve Cappy a little bit in the game, again. Mario skin with and without Cappy, there's an option. But yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of like black and white and quite dull, but I think it would make for a unique Mario Kart course. See what they can do with that. Could have a lot of jumps going between like um, different parts of, of the land as well, I don't know. I'm sure they could figure something out. The other one is Lake Kingdom, and it's a bit of a weird one for me to pick, but the only reason I've sort of gone with that is because it gives them an option of maybe an underwater course, because obviously they introduced underwater in Mario Kart 7. And I guess they'll continue that as well going forward. So I mentioned Captain Toad as a new character. So I think maybe you know, he's added his game. He's been ported to the Switch. He was also on the 3DS. Um, to give him his own course based on Captain Toad. Don't know what it would look like, mind you. But there's another option there. Um, a new Donkey Kong course then, I think, would be, would be great to have one based off Tropical Freeze. Because obviously the last new Mario Kart game, Mario Kart 8, came out before Tropical Freeze, I believe. So, um... I didn't quite check that, I'll be honest, but I'm pretty confident that is correct. But Tropical Freeze has been ported to the Switch, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is ported to the Switch, probably nothing new. So that's the last Donkey Kong game to get a course from, I believe. They could probably get something from that. Luigi's Mansion then, so Luigi's Mansion 3 has come out on the Switch. You've also had Luigi's Mansion 2 and a port of the original on the 3DS beforehand. So new Luigi, Luigi's Mansion would be a really good option. I know we've had Luigi's Mansion's courses before, but one based on the new game would be great. And it could be like, could be going down that same route of Bowser's Castle, um, Rainbow Road, where you just get the new Luigi's Mansion. I think that would be quite cool. Um, so Wario obviously usually gets his own course as well. And I think maybe base one somehow on, not necessarily Colosseum or that type of thing, which they tend to go with potentially based on like a WarioWare. I'm not sure what mini games they could incorporate in, but something a little bit wacky and a little bit mad and out there would be quite cool. Or oh, what's that game mode? The one they based the level on um, on Super Smash Brothers, where you're in the bedroom and the mother walks in and you've got to make, make, make sure you're not seen by her. Maybe do a spin on that with a course, implement that mechanic somehow in a section of the track where you may be coming through this part. And if you get seen, you spin out, something like that. That'd be quite cool, quite unique. 
or maybe that could be part of the course and you could just go through different mini games that are involved in Mario where that's just just talking about some ideas I think it could make it quite interesting 3D World has just released on the Switch with the extension of Bowser's Fury so when you're looking at the new Bowser's Castle maybe look at what they've done with Bowser's Fury and try and incorporate some of that if they if possible into the new Bowser's Castle I think that's um, something worth looking at okay so now looking at some of the like non Mario related stuff Splatoon 3 has obviously just been announced. They've already got Inklings as characters in Mario Kart 8, so if you're going to do a new Splatoon course, link it in with the new game that's going to be coming out. If it's out or not by the time Mario Kart 9 is in development or announced or whatever, who knows, but um, link it in with, Mario, with Splatoon 3 I think is a good option there. Breath of the Wild course for Link I think would be a great addition. So we've got obviously Hyrule Circuit, which was a DLC course in Mario Kart 8 and included in Interlux. I think something a little bit more open and massive, like based on Breath of the Wild, could be really nice. Or even further, if Breath of the Wild 2 is out or we know a little bit more about it, again, a tie-in here would be great. Animal Crossing then, we've already got a course. I'm not sure really what too much you could do with it to change it up, other than just change the scenes around the place. But obviously Animal Crossing sold so well on the Switch, I think they'd be silly not to include another new version of this. Um, if you're going to base it off the new game, maybe obviously the fact that it's like islands, have it so that you've got two islands and there's an underwater bit where you can sort of show some of the animals and stuff that you can catch fish in when you go underwater. Obviously you can dive in Animal Crossing now, so maybe you see some villagers diving under in this part of the track. But you hop between two or three different islands, showing some different examples of how people have set their islands up. I think that would be quite cool. I don't know, even like drive through the museum and show all the bugs. Again, just ideas that are that I'm coming up with. I think the hop in between the islands would be a, a, a cool thing and as you go into the water you see all the different fish that you can catch during the game and I guess you could incorporate the seasons part that was incorporated in the track before. Each island could be its own season and the animals like the bugs, the fish that you catch uh, that you see on each island in the different season would, would represent the ones available in those seasons. Oh, and, and again, they could also be based on the themed events. So like we had a Christmas event or we had like the Easter event. We had the Halloween event. You could do something like that and just incorporate the different events that have happened so far in the game into the course. Um, okay, so I'm going a little bit back in time for this one. But Rosalina's has obviously been in Mario for a while, been in Mario Kart. But was there ever a Mario Galaxy course? There's been a Mario Galaxy level in Super Smash Brothers, But I think, like again, one that's like... Um, now we've got the zero gravity, just like one that goes between planets. You've got like a rocket booster that goes from one planet to the next. You go around the planet a bit, go back. I think that would be quite cool. Even if it was like a point to point and you're going from different planets all the time in Mario Galaxy format. I think that would be quite cool. Again, Mario Galaxy is now playable on the Switch through 3D old styles. So I think that's a good option. I mentioned Pokemon characters having some sort of uh, input here. If it was Pikachu or whatever. So Pokemon Sword and Shield having some sort of inclusion unless there's a new one announced by then but the wild area I think that would make for a really good interest in Mario Kart circuit and for example like in past courses where you've had the cows walking across the track in Moo Meadows or, um, or Goombas or just like anything like that um, you could have Pokemon walking around in the wild area that it could get in your way and spin you out and attack you that would, I, think, I think that would be perfect if you're going to bring any Pokemon crossover that would be perfect. Metroid Prime 4 is on the horizon. We're still waiting to use more, hear more news of that. I've already touched on Samus coming in as a character. But if you're going to bring a Metroid course over, I guess it depends where the new game's going to take you and if we know more about it by then. But otherwise, go to Brinstar, um, do something like they did in Smash Brothers with the, the acid levels up and down rising in different parts of the track. Maybe like you've got Grumble Volcano as a track in the past where the, the floor has fallen away. You could have it so like the racetrack is a bit uneven. And as you go do the three laps, the level of acid rising. So the route you have to take is based on which parts are lower and now we have acid there. So you have to take a different route. I think that would be quite cool. Do something along those lines. And I mentioned Sonic as well. If you're going to go third party and I think Green Hill Zone would be the perfect um, sort of course here you could have the loops stuff like that again quite basic could be quite a basic track with loops but based in green hill zone 
I think that's all we need to do with that one. So there's the new course ideas I've got. Let me know in the comments below if you think of anything cool, if you think I've missed any sort of like game inclusions out to base the course on, let me know. Going on to the retro courses then, I base this like you've got the shell, banana leaf and lightning cups and I've picked four courses for each one from past games. The courses that um, are in, in each one are represented of where they came in their game. So for example the shell cup, I've picked four courses that they were all included in the mushroom cup in their original games and the banana cup would be, well the flower cup and so on. So I've, I haven't done any crossover, it would be the first cup, the second cup, third cup, fourth cup and it would be represented in the same bracket here. So first up I've got Calamari Desert which first featured in the Nintendo 64, made an appearance in Mario Kart 7. But I feel like, you know, it is quite basic but it's quite iconic with the train in the desert and I think this would be a nice good start. Um, I say start but... I've got all my actual notes, I actually changed it around. I'll put this second because I think it would be a nice start in terms of the first cup. You'd have some basic uh, slower tracks. I say slow, I mean like not as much going on. I would actually start it off with Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart Stadium. I think you've always got to start with like a Mario Kart circuit or Mario circuit and flip those two around. So Calamari Desert goes second, Mario Kart Stadium from Mario Kart 8 goes first. I think that's a good one to bring over. It was a good sort of introduction to Zero Gravity. Just bring that over and it's a, it's a nice sort of retro track at this point and a good one to start off with. Going into third then, I think Luigi's Mansion from Mario Kart DS. I think that was a really good circuit and um, it hasn't been brought over anywhere from what I can remember to any of the other games so far. So perfect to bring it over to this one first hand. Like I said, it ties in, tie, ties in with uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 and the franchise has grown a bit of late, so giving it more exposure, um, I think that would be a good a good track to bring over. The fourth one for the first cup then, Shell Cup, would be Shy Guy Bazaar from Mario Kart 7. Again, this hasn't been ported anywhere else, as I'm aware of. Um, and again, it's quite an interesting, unique track. And to end this cup, the last two have a little bit more going on than the first two. It's quite unique really, I don't really think there's anything else much like it, so I think that'll be a good one to bring over. Banana Cup then, so I've got Donut Plains 2 from the Super Nintendo, the first Mario Kart game. Again, it's probably quite a basic track and when they port these ones over they do stay quite basic, but sometimes you just need that, I give it the representation, this is the one I've picked from that game. Mario Kart Wii then for the second track and I've gone with DK Summit, so... Um, this was a good track, I think. Obviously, you go to the top of a mountain and come down like a ski slope sort of thing, I think. Could be wrong. I believe that's what it is. Um, but yeah, good track nonetheless. Well, Luigi Pinball then, for um, from the Mario Kart DS game. This track, I'm surprised it's not been brought over to anything before. A lot going on in this. I think in like Switch graphics now in HD, I think the colours could pop quite well on this track and it would look really, really nice. The last track here, I've gone for Mushroom Bridge from Double Dash, which is also a Mario Kart DS, but it's a good track from that game. We've got the cars that go around the track as well. Um, so it gives that sort of inclusion there. Nothing else I've picked has got that as a ob obstacle in the game, if you like. And But they need to make sure you can drive on the bridge. I think they closed it off when they ported it over somewhere before. But just drive up the, um, the side with the boosts. Not that I ever necessarily always helped you, but... It's just a unique feature that, you know, is always quite nice and nostalgic, I guess. Going into the Leaf Cup, the third cup then, I've gone for Piranha Plant Pipeway from Mario Kart 7. I did quite enjoy this track and I think it's worth putting this one over. I think it's a good track. Airship Fortress then from Mario Kart DS. I quite like this cup that I've made you. I think it's full of really good, strong tracks and Airship Fortress trust again don't believe has been ported really enjoyed this track back on Mario Kart DS and I think it would be a really good good option I could be wrong it might have been ported over actually um, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong on that one <laughs> otherwise I'd still bring it back regardless Cooper Cape I know has been ported over from Mario Kart Wii it came to Mario Kart 7 but again such a strong track I think it's, it was a really good um, solid solid outing I think a lot of people like Cooper Cape so bring that one back and then I've gone from Mario Kart 8 for the last track and Electro Dome. I think again, it was a really good, a vibrant track. The colours pop and the music was good with it. Let's bring that back over here. For the last cup, I've gone with Wario 
Colosseum from the Nintendo GameCube game, which was Double Dash. I am really surprised this one hasn't made an appearance somewhere else. You know, the Colosseum ones are always, always a lot of fun. There's a lot going on here, so I think that's a good track to introduce the last cup here. Banshee Boardwalk from the Nintendo 64, I believe. This might have made an appearance on the DS. Um, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I'll bring that back here now in a HD format. Bowser's Castle, the one I've picked is the one from the DS. I think this was one of the longer uh, iterations and most interesting. So give it a new lease of life on the Nintendo Switch, I, I feel. It's about time to bring... I picked a lot of DS courses, but to be honest, I think it was one of the best games and they had a lot of good courses on, on Mario Kart DS that deserve to be brought back. And the Rainbow Road that I would finish off with is the one from the Wii. I believe this one hasn't been used. I could be wrong again. I could like I should have checked all this stuff I did try and check but some of the stuff I might have missed but I think it would be a good one to bring back over here I was toying between the Wii and the GameCube Double Dash but because I brought Wario Coliseum for this cup I decided to go with a different game for the Rainbow Road okay so that's all the courses so let me know if I've missed any really good ones that you would love to see come back in the comments um, and after the courses, what I really want to say is what could I add to the game to sort of give it a new lease of life to uh, to make it a new game, to show us a new iteration of Mario Kart then. So obviously in the past you've had things like Double Dash, had the two people in one car. They brought in Underwater in um, Mario Kart 7 and I believe like the gliders and stuff were also introduced there. Mario Kart Wii introduced the jumping mechanic. Um, they had bikes there as well which, which could do wheelies and stuff which they haven't really introduced since. Um, and Mario Kart 8 introduced Zero Gravity, so where are they going to go with with Mario Kart 9? I don't really know what the answer is for a new mechanic as, uh, as such, but I would love to see the mechanic of Double Dash reintroduced, even if it was a separate game mode, so you have the normal Mario Kart and Double Dash Mario Kart as two different game modes. Why can't they just bring that back? Um, aside from that, I don't really know. I can't think of where they could take it. Now they've gone underwater, they've done flying. Maybe they could take it. So you've, rather than just gliders, you have some levels where you literally can fly. That's something that they haven't done. So they obviously got zero gravity where you go into sections and you glide, I guess, or hover and you can go upside down and stuff, but actually fly in certain courses or one or two courses, which are all to do with um, flying i don't know it's a suggestion i'm not sure how good that would be the one that i want to really push is like i said the double dash needs to come back they need to just reintroduce that it's such a feature that they missed um that's been missed and i don't really know why it's been limited to just the one game otherwise i think they don't really need to add too much new to the game maybe some new items um i don't know what items they would introduce. I'd like to see the reintroduction of maybe the big mushroom um, power block, stuff like that. Again, I would love to see a sort of everything is here in regards to the items, like with the characters, everything that's been there in the past comes back. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. Oh, one thing I would love to see, fake item box, make it look like the actual item box like it did back in the day. I think that would be something that should be brought back. And get rid of the like rubber band in AI as well, um, where you can just not pull away from them. That was irritating. You know, if you're good to the game, you should be good to the game. Um, rubber band in AI is just annoying. So get rid of that. Anyway, I think that's all I've really got to say about Mario Kart 9. I hope you liked what I have uh, suggested for a new game. Let me know in the comments if you did enjoy the stuff I've talked about, or if you've got any ideas of your own that you feel deserve to be mentioned. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all of my new videos. And I shall see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate your support. I shall see you in the next video. Ta-ra.